Becoming a national champion is such a difficult task for anyone to achieve. Even more difficult than that may just be the expectations that you are expected to fulfill almost immediately after. With such high expectations, pressure is super high for any players, but arguably no one has more pressure on them this year than Jamar Chase. The top receiver in the nation has almost insurmountable expectations set for him. But how will he handle these expectations after opting out of the college football season? And who is Jamar Chase? In the Who Is series, we go through the backstories of up and coming collegiate and pro athletes. If you like this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Also, comment below who you want to see in the Who Is series. We are starting Fan Friday in October, where you will get to choose who we will cover. Jamar Anthony Chase was born on March 1st, 2000, in Harvey, Louisiana. Ever since Jamar Chase was born, it was a team effort. His mother and father, Talia and Jimmy Chase, raised an excellent young man in Jamar. They saw what a special man he was going to become at such a young age. From the time he was able to pick up a football, Jamar set goals for himself. For Jamar, it was not always about what he can do on the field, he was all about what we can do on the field together. His parents from a young age instilled a team first mindset into Jamar's mind. He may be one of college football's flashiest players, but he cares less about stardom and more about being the best person he can be. Throughout the years, it has become harder to gauge a player if they are not too outspoken. Like Larry Fitzgerald during his entire NFL career, Jamar Chase lets his play do the talking. He began in high school where he caught the eyes of the country immediately. Jamar Chase attended Archbishop Rummel High School in Metairie, Louisiana. An athletic freak, the coaches knew that they had to put Jamar's full athleticism to use. With strong hands and precise cuts and movements, starting at wide receiver was a very obvious choice for Chase's position. His high school measurables were absolutely insane. He did a 4-1 shuttle, ran a 4.66 40-yard dash, bench pressed 245 pounds, and had a 36-inch vertical and could already squat 385 pounds. He did all of this standing at 6 foot 1 inch high and weighing 193 pounds. Now, while only being a sophomore in high school, he got his first taste of varsity football. His team brought him along to the 2016 opening regionals. He was immediately granted the number one and a starting position on the varsity team. As a high school wide receiver, often all you can control is that you run the best routes and hope that your quarterback sees you. Jamar Chase had absolutely no issue with this. In fact, his entire high school career, he was the playmaker for his entire team and was becoming very special. His parents instilled in him at such a young age that it was super important to set goals for yourself. I think that any goal he may have set in high school, he must have without a doubt shattered. During his high school career, Jamar Chase had accumulated some absolutely ridiculous stats. At Art Bishop Rummel High School, he had 115 catches for an unbelievable 2,152 yards and 30 touchdowns. What he did was absolutely absurd. He was without a doubt being scouted by the highest level of college football. He had a ridiculous 28 offers. Some of the schools that were after the talents of Jamar Chase were Auburn, Michigan, TCU, Florida, Kansas, Florida State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, and most importantly, LSU. This was a very difficult decision. He had every single football player's dream. D1's most prestigious programs going after his talent. Now Jamar Chase was originally expected to sign with LSU, but he was having second thoughts. You see, Auburn was trying to snatch the Louisiana product from LSU's grasps. He was leaning towards signing with Auburn when LSU got a whiff of it. Jamar's father got a phone call with an unforgettable voice. He said, Jimmy, get the family ready. The whole coaching staff is coming. That is when a limousine bus pulled in front of the Chase family's New Orleans home. It was February 2nd with Mardi Gras decorations all around. Out of that limousine bus stepped Ed Ogeron and nine assistant coaches. It was less than a week away and LSU did not want the Louisiana native to be playing football anywhere else than the infamous Louisiana State University. The experience was so shocking for Jamar. The coaching staff for one of the most prestigious college football schools in the country was in his home. They wanted him and only him to come play for their team. Now, Jamar Chase attended many football camps as all major recruits would. Ed Odron spoke first. He told Chase why he needed to be at LSU. Each coach then took turns saying something to Jamar and his father. Now, I'm not sure if this is common knowledge, but defensive coordinator for LSU, Dave Aranda, is not known for being outspoken whatsoever. He said to the young Chase that they could not find anyone at any of their recruiting camps that could stop him. Jamar's father recalled the day by saying, It was amazing because I had never spoken to Aranda. He doesn't do much talking. And he did that day. 
Jimmy also told his son that something like this entire encounter does not just happen. He explained this is so rare and so special that he could not look over this during his decision making. The impact this visit had was substantial, as it made Jamar turn around and ink his commitment to become an LSU Tiger. As a true freshman at LSU, he made a small impact. He was surrounded by good receivers on the team such as this year's NFL Draft 22nd overall pick Justin Jefferson. However, Chase did appear in all 13 games, starting in 7 of them. He accumulated 23 receptions for 330 yards and 3 touchdowns. Although these numbers aren't fantastic, Jamar Chase made huge strides in development. He learned to be more explosive, but also more precise. He worked on his hands especially so he could become an even better all-around player. All this work Chase put in with Joe Brady, Ed Odron, and company paid off in his sophomore season. Now during the opening week against a not-so-great team in Georgia Southern, he only caught two passes for 21 yards and a touchdown. But he didn't play very long, as this game was an absolute blowout. Week 2 is when we saw our first glimpse of the Jamar Chase that we know and love. In a matchup with number 9 ranked Texas, Jamar Chase showed off big time. He caught eight passes for 147 yards. He did not reach the end zone, but he caught a bunch of very important first down catches, helping his team edge out a victory by a score of 45 to 38. In week three on the road against Vanderbilt, he recorded 10 catches for 229 yards and four, yes, four touchdowns. He absolutely shredded the Vandy secondary and the Tigers charged forward. It seemed as if he got on the board every week, as in massive blowout win against Utah State, he caught another touchdown. It seemed that every single time that LSU played in a big game, Chase delivered. Against number 7 Florida, Chase had recorded 7 catches for 127 yards and a touchdown. LSU beat down on Florida 42-28. In the next two weeks against Mississippi State and Auburn, Jamar had 13 receptions for 175 yards and a touchdown. Jamar Chase ended the regular season with having 4 straight games with over 6 catches, 140 plus yards, and 8 touchdowns. With these performances, he put himself completely on the map for NFL teams. He helped LSU go undefeated and make the college football playoffs. Not only did they go to the playoffs, they won the national championship. Jamar Chase was a huge part in that game, catching 9 passes for 221 yards and 2 touchdowns. As a total on the season, Jamar Chase had 84 catches for 1,780 yards and 20 touchdowns. Now, after having such an incredible season, Jamar Chase has become an instant fan favorite and a huge prospect in the eyes of the NFL. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has a different effect on everybody. People feel comfortable and uncomfortable in different situations. Jamar Chase decided that it was best for him, his family, and his future to opt out of the college football season. Although a tough decision, Jamar made it himself and he will be training all season long to be ready for the NFL draft. In Todd McShay's top 50 prospects, Chase came in as the top wide receiver and number four prospect overall for the 2021 NFL Draft. Sometimes the right decision is not always the easiest one to make. And in my opinion, this is the case for Jamar Chase. If you like this video, check out the other videos in the Who Is series. Remember to subscribe to the channel and embrace the grind.